first in the AL West. Very, very cool. It's something to be proud of for sure. Uh, best pitching in baseball. I don't think I need to add one of best rotations anymore. I think we can say best rotation in baseball. With an offense that's kind of been up and down. I mean, it's been a really, uh, I'm going to call it a nerve-wracking uh, way to watch baseball at times. The flip side of that is it can be really fun, like it was last night, right? Uh, fun for some. <laughs> maybe not for you. I, uh, I almost, when you're in Washington, D.C., the booth that they put me in is very high. It's, <laughs> it's like Sears Tower high. And when the ball hit the foul pole in the seventh inning on Sunday, I could look down and I was like, is it worth it? Like, should I consider it? It's, uh, it? It can be exhilarating. It can be fun. Obviously, winning feels great. But, uh, no, we, we do measure ourselves against ourselves. Being in first place is great. Obviously, winning is great. I think what we're looking for now is to consistently play to our potential. And I don't think we've done that yet in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. Justin, there's so many games in the baseball season, and uh, we're always trying to figure out who is this team this week, who are they this next week. When do trends become real to you guys? Is it a series? Is it a month, a week? Like When do you buy into what you're seeing? You know, for where guys are at in the season, I think we're, we're there. You know, if, if you know, you're know you over 50 games in and you're at a certain place, like sometimes the scoreboard can lie to you and sometimes it can't. And, you know, 50 games is more than enough to say, you know, we – we should be better in some areas and in some areas we feel really good about where we're at in terms of like trend lines and what you're seeing over a week or a couple week period. It's really hard to get too high or too low. You know, everybody, the best players in the world, Julio Rodriguez, Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani are going to have the week or 10 days where it just doesn't go their way. And then they get right back on track. And you know, that's, that's just how baseball mm -hmm. works. Uh, Justin, you mentioned you haven't played to your potential in a lot of ways. I can make a guess when it comes to specific players or specific areas, but where's one way that you as a GM look and you go, I have a lot of faith that we can take a step forward in this specific area? I just think without naming any players in particular, I think generally speaking, 1 through 9 offensively or 1 through 13 offensively, we need to do a more consistent job of putting points on the board. I think we see a ton of pitches, and that's great. Um, we often get the starter out of the game early just by volume of pitches. We need to do a better job of putting the ball in play. We need to do more damage when we do mm -hmm. put it in play. Um, I think one of the things we did really well last year around too many strikeouts was we had a ton of runners on base, constant traffic, and we have not been able to replicate that consistently this year. We need to do that. There cannot be inning or two or three inning stretches where there's just no traffic on the bases. We've hit well with runners on. We just need more runners on right now. July 30th is a trade deadline. What's that? What's it like for you as that deadline approaches? Because I asked you about the trends, right? And I would assume that the way you guys are playing kind of influence what you're trying to do and what you want to do as that trade deadline approaches. Um, what what are the bigger influences of what you guys are trying to do? I mean, it's really all about how your team is playing and, and what you can do to push them to the next spot, understanding who you are as a team, where you're at in your, your growth cycle. Is it a win now phase of your growth cycle? Are you building towards something bigger? Um, and what the team on the field has told you they need. Um, my son's birthday is July 29th as well, so um, have a busy it's, a, July. it's a hectic. It's a hectic couple days for me in general. But uh, no, we, you know, we anticipate this team being a team that sort of tells us that we need to add at the deadline, whether that's July 30th or July 15th. I don't think we're waiting for an artificial day on the mm -hmm. calendar when the opportunities present themselves. I think we need to be really open-minded to, to adding to this group and making sure that we give them every chance to win the division. Uh, go deep in the playoffs, like achieve the goals that we have. Uh, related to what Bump said, how do those conversations kind of change? Like what is a, a trade conversation in May compared to one in July? The trade conversations in May are expensive. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's really hard this time of year uh, to get teams to be motivated to, to trade off major league pieces. It, it's just it's very early in the season. I don't think anybody really wants to wave the, the white flag or teams don't typically do it in the middle or the end of May. Uh, I think now teams are starting to pick up the phone and at least have like feeler conversations. You know, if things don't get better over the next couple of weeks, we would be willing to. That sort of thing is starting to happen over the last three or four days we've noticed uh, there's no denying that the arms in this organization is crazy and um i would imagine that there was a point where you guys felt that this group had this type of potential um when you put this group together did you feel like you had the potential to have the best arms or best rotation in the game or were you just saying look we might have a top five group i i think we felt that way for over the last couple of years um you know i think that the thing that really probably changed our sight line one through five was what happened with bryce and brian mm -hmm. last year jumping straight from double a and doing what they did right out of the gate 
I, I think just gives our rotation a different ceiling than maybe we've had over the last couple of years. Um, we need to go out and pitch like that. Obviously, you know, Logan was awesome over the weekend. Uh, the Rock has been phenomenally consistent. George was great last night. The way he mixed his pitches uh, back and forth, in and out. You know, he didn't rely just on the heater, um, but really did a nice job of mixing everything in, doubling up with secondary pitches to keep them off balance. I think you know we know what we're going to get from those three guys, and seeing the steps forward that Bryce and Brian have taken over the last year really does change our ceiling. We feel like that's the standard we want is to be the best rotation in the in the league. Do you feel like at times you've seen a, a version of the team that you guys were hoping to construct? Because I know that you guys moved away from some strikeouts. Uh, brought in some new faces. Obviously, some of the, go- the guys like Jorge dealing with a hamstring injury hasn't been able to get out there as much as he'd like. But are there times when you see a vision of like, oh, this is what we constructed? There's been times, uh, you know, and I, I, again, I'm really excited about where we're at record-wise, and I think there are signs of the type of team we can be. It just needs to happen more often, particularly on the offensive end. We just need to be more consistent with putting pressure. Our pitching is good enough to carry us. It shouldn't have to every night. Um, so that's, you know, just being honest about where we're at. We need to see more signs more frequently. I do think we should have a good offensive club. I do think by the time the year is over, we will. Um, it, I would like it to start happening sooner rather than later. I, I love a good debut, man. And we got to see Classe this year so far, and we yep. saw Bliss. Um, what's that like for you guys? And do you facilitate having their, their family here? Because we saw Bliss at his family here. Yeah, you know, we, we do at times, and sometimes it just may, it's it's really tough depending on the travel and, and how much notice we have. I think Ryan got really lucky that his whole family, I think his girlfriend too, was in Tacoma visiting him. So it just worked out great. Um, I, it's really special for the whole organization, whether you drafted and developed that player or acquired him via trade, to, to be there when someone gets their first time. Uh, in the field and they look up and they see the three decks it's really really cool um, it's a it's a point of pride for our scouts for our player development people for all the trainers there's a ton of people who contributed to that player's first day in the big leagues and all of them i think feel a real pride and joy when it comes to that 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 moment and it, it means something like a small piece of something to them that all put together make a big piece of something for that player and his family There was um, a period of time with this team where we kind of understood it was a step back, and for so long we were just talking about the farm system, which was for a while the best in baseball, and then you start debuting guys and it changes. We've kind of gotten away from talking about the farm system a bit and just focusing on this club, but you guys now have some really great bats there. Tell us a bit about some of the names that you're excited about over the next, you know, year two, three. Sure. Uh, It's... We should keep talking about them because this is we're about to go back to the point where we have one of, if not the best farm systems in baseball over the next 12 months. I think right now we have seven top 100 prospects on Baseball America's ranking system, which we talk about when we're good and we don't talk about when they don't like our guys. Um, Who needs that system? Exactly. We don't believe in them. (laughs) Um, No, but it's it's a it's a big time for us. You know, uh, Tyler Locklear, we just promoted a triple A after he he really just, you know, beat the crap out of double-A, um, which is hard to do. It's a big jump from A ball to double-A, particularly for a right-handed hister- hitter in the ballpark that we play in, and, and he just obliterated that league very quickly. Uh, so he's in triple-A now. I think he's played two games there. Uh, at double-A still, Harry Ford and Cole Young, who are both really performing very well. Cole's gotten hot over the last two, three weeks or so, and, and Harry has just you know gone ballistic over the last month or so. He's been one of the best minor league players at any level over the last month. And we were talking about it the other day. This would be Harry Ford's draft year. He would be draft eligible this year as a you know a junior catcher coming from Georgia Tech if we hadn't drafted him. I would be shocked if we weren't talking about Harry Ford as like one of the five best amateur players in the country at this stage. And he's in Double A at 21, and and you know showing us that you know he may be ready for a, a, a step up at some point later in the year. And then below those guys, level wise, um, there's just a whole host of players um, at A ball and Modesto. It's one of the best minor league teams in all of affiliated baseball right now. I think their run differential is something like plus 120 over <laughs> over two months, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and the whole team is loaded with position player prospects from Colt Emerson, who's hurt right now, to Johnny Farmello, Michael Arroyo, Laz Montas, Aiden Smith. You know, I'm sure I just forgot someone in that, that grouping, but you just go down the, down the lineup. Uh, up and down the roster is just loaded with talent. And then, you know, non-bat-wise, we have guys like Logan Evans at Double A, who's, I think he's, you know, sporting a sub one and a half ERA, jumping straight from the University of Pittsburgh to Double A. So um, without just running through like a long history of our top 30 prospects, uh, we're really excited about where we're at. And we do think, you know, over the course of the next year, we're going to jump right back into the top five in terms of the talent that we have coming uh, across all of baseball. Very cool. Great to hear. Um, 
I'm involved in like a neighborhood war right now. Uh oh. Right? Like, <laughs> like the weather's getting better and is it? And my and my or I it's supposed to at least. <laughs> and like my my wife, right? She's like, oh, let's let's paint our house this color. So we paint our house this color. And then there's a house three doors down that that paint their house a different color. My wife's like, you see that? All right, let's change our trim. And then they they change our trim. This is right? the weirdest neighborhood war. Hey, it is. It's, it goes down, Stacey. <laughs> I don't know if it's directly indirect. It goes down. What neighborhood is this? This is an HOA kind <laughs> good, good old Monroe. Good old Monroe. Small neighborhood okay. in Monroe. And uh, and and my wife is like fascinated with just what's going on in our neighborhood and around. I go, man, just focus on our house and what we got going. Don't worry about all that. But I want you to look in the neighborhood of the AOS. When you look at your house in the AOS, you look at all these other houses. It took a while, but now I see where we're going. <laughs> see, yeah, it's bear with me. I'm, I'm gonna get to the point. So, uh, what's the neighborhood looking like? How's your how's your house looking? <laughs> Uh, the neighborhood is going to get challenging as the season goes on. Obviously, I don't think, you know, I include us in that. I don't think the teams in the ALS that I think people had presumed would be contenders for the division. And so, you know, us, the Astros, the Rangers, I don't think any of us have played to our potential thus far. Um, I also think that all three of those teams, us at the top of the list, have played very challenging schedules, mm -hmm. sort of playing the best in baseball a lot over the first couple months of the season. I think over the next couple months, the division is going to get very challenging. I don't think we can just sit back on our hands and say, ah, somebody's going to win the division with like 83 or 84 wins. I, I don't I don't think that. Those teams are too talented. Um, the Astros are still the Astros. Um, you know, Maybe not um, quite the record that they've had over the previous years, but I, you know, I look across the diamond. I just don't see them going away. I think there's a run there for sure. And the Rangers are the defending World Series champs, and you know they're pretty beat up right now. Those guys will get back and get healthy, and it's going to be a challenge. So I, I think our neighborhood is going to be really good by the time that we get to the you know the dog days of summer in August and September, and we need to be prepared for that. Those HOA fees are I'm telling you they're going to be insane. Where are they going though? I mean, my. Anyway, that's another conversation. Well, uh, no, I mean, it's a good point, though, because when we were looking at the power rankings earlier, Bump noted that of the uh, eight teams that were at Seattle, Seattle played all but one. Yep. So, I mean, you guys have had, as have as of Houston, um, you know, same with the Rangers, a, a really tough slate so far. Now, when people look at the Rangers, they go, well, they're getting DeGrom. When people look at Houston, they go, well, they're getting healthier with their pitching. If you were to look at the Mariners and make a case for they're in first place without this happening yet, what's something you look at and you go, just wait until this happens? I, I think if you just look at our lineup, and I would assume you regress to just career norms or projections, you know, I think JP and Julio and Garve and Polo, Hanny, among other guys, are are very likely to take a significant step forward as we get into the season. I just don't think this is going to be you look up in September and what's on the scoreboard today is going to exist on the scoreboard for those guys at that point. Um, so I, I think that's our, our step forward. And I also think, you know, we will improve our team over time yeah. with either internal additions or additions externally. And you can see the same thing for the Astros and the Rangers. I wouldn't expect any of those teams to be sellers of the deadline. I think all of us have big aspirations and will continue to pursue those aspirations. Just, I don't know if you know this about M's fans, but uh, they're always yelling for the big move. Make the big move. And during the offseason, there were some moves that were made, and people were like, well, we shall see. Is there a move that you guys made during the offseason that you're most proud of? Because we've seen Rojas get hot. We saw Luke get hot. You, you sit back and say, I told you so. Y'all be patient. Let me do my thing. <laughs> I think if you think like that, you're going to get humbled really fast. <laughs> ba baseball is really hard. Um, we all have our share of stinkers, things that didn't work out. Uh, I would be loath to get up here and pound my chest and say, nailed that one. Uh, the one thing I will say is that we work really hard this offseason to not trade our pitching, uh, particularly our young yeah. pitching. Yeah. Uh, that was a, a real point of pride for our whole group is like, let's push creativity to the max. Let's not take the easy way out and just assume the only way we can improve the totality of the 26 man is to trade young pitching away to do it. You know, that's how we're built. We're built on a foundation of, of these five starters right now. Um, so I am glad we kept our young pitching, but you know, that's about as big a pat on the back as I ever want to give uh, because it's just baseball is really humbling. It's really hard. There'll be a lot more screw ups in my future. I hope, uh, and hopefully there'll be good decisions too. He is Mariners GM Justin Hollander. Uh, Justin, our thoughts and prayers with you at the end of July when you have uh, not just the trade deadline but your son's birthday. I like to think at one point you're going to have two phones, and one is going to be, uh, you know, a team uh, looking to deal, and another is going to be like a pinata company, and you're gonna constantly your heart just racing. Like, who is this? I uh, we survived our fa first family road trip last week. So, nice. Uh, we we made it in New York and D.C. for a week straight with two kids, uh, and it <laughs> two was younger kids, two right? younger Pretty kids, young? seven yeah. and eight years old and uh they had a blast and i texted my wife they were 
beaming on the train ride from from New York to D.C. Uh, wow. with the whole team running up and down the cars. And I looked at my wife and I said, "One and done. We're not, <laughs> we're not it. doing this. Is it? That's uh, it. But it was it was great. And that's part of this job is to balance all those things. I'm yeah. super lucky. Jerry's great with with our time and making sure that. Whether we're, I remember actually blowing out the candles, helping him blow out the candles on his cake in 2022, and then going back out in the backyard Aww. to finish the Luis Castillo trade that night. So um, <laughs> those, that's just part of the deal. Is it? Uh, it's part of baseball. It's 24/7. But we are really lucky to get to share those things with our family. So a successful awesome. day, considering that trade worked out it's, pretty dang well. Yeah. That will be one that I do pat ourselves yeah. on the back just for. Just a little bit. The Rock has been awesome and a great <laughs> fit here. Again, he is Mariners GM Justin Holder. Justin, we're going to kick you out. We do awesome. appreciate your time, Thanks, but you're finally rid of us.